In this video, we'll walk through an example of a hypothesis test about two proportions. In testing two types of golf clubs, you hit 70 balls with the Titletown 9-iron and 70 balls with the Big Bear 9-iron. With the Titletown club, you hit your desired target 56 times. You hit the target 46 times with your Big Bear club. At the 1% significance level, can you say that you are more accurate with the Titletown club? Let's first understand what this question is asking. More accurate means that the Tidal Town Club would have a higher proportion of hitting your target. So I'll draw a little diagram here. We've got a target of our golf green, and we're hitting our shots, and they are landing on the green or off the green. So on the green would be your desired target, and that so that so you are uh, you are accurate if you hit the target a high percentage of your times or a high proportion of your times. Okay, so we're going to set up our hypotheses. The null hypothesis is p sub 1 equals p sub 2. It is the population proportions are the same. Populations being all of your golf shots that you would ever take with with these clubs. The or there is so there is no difference in the proportions. Now the alternative hypothesis is that p sub 1 is greater than, more accurate, remember, greater than or a higher proportion than, than with the other club. Now I better specify here, we should always make sure we, we know which proportion is which. We're saying that in our alternative that p sub 1 is greater than p sub 2 and we're testing that Titletown club has is more accurate or has a higher per percentage or proportion. So I'm going to put T here for P sub 1 and B for Big Bear for P sub 2. So the proportion with the title town is greater than the proportion with the Big Bear. And I'll write that in words that the title town club is more accurate. So we can refer back to that. It's always good to put some words, attach some meaning to to what you have here. The Title Town Club is more accurate. I highly suggest talking statistics next time you're playing golf with someone. See what kind of a response you get. Okay, now what we have to do is make sure we can find the test statistic. The test statistic Z. Well, it follows this formula and that is Z equals p hat sub 1 minus p hat sub 2 minus p sub 1 minus p sub 2, where p is the population proportion, the unknown population proportion. And this comes from the, the null hypothesis. So if p sub 1 equals p sub 2, then p sub 1 minus p sub 2, the difference of two things that are the same, is just zero. So I'm just going to jump right to this and say that this, we know that this part is going to be zero. Okay. Now, onward with this equation, this formula. We have that in the numerator. In the denominator, we have quite a bit. We've got p bar times q bar over n sub 1 plus p bar times q bar over n sub 2. And what is this p bar and q bar? Well, let's let's look into that. The p bar p bar equals x sub 1 plus x sub 2 where x is the number of successes in each sample. And n sub 1 and n, n sub 2 are the, of course the sample sizes. So x sub 1 we are told what x sub 1 is. That is the 56, because the sub 1 uh, goes back to the title town club. So that is 56, and the x sub 2 is the 46, 46 times. So we have 56 plus 46 in the numerator. In the denominator, we have 70. The, the sample size will not always be the same for each sample, but in this example it is. So we have 70 here and 70 here, so a total of 140 in the denominator. So you get, in the end, a p-bar 
equal to approximately 0.7286. Now q and q bar is just 1 minus p. So q bar is just 1 minus p bar. So that is approximately 0.2714. So we'll, we'll be plugging those in here and here and here and here in the denominator. We also need to figure out what p sub uh, p bar p hat sub 1 and p hat sub 2 are. So let's go ahead and do that. p hat sub 1 with the title town is this 56, the number of successes, divided by 70. So 56 divided by 70, and that equals 0 0.8 p hat sub 2 equals 46 divided by 70, and that equals approximately 0 0.6571. Approximately 0 0.6571. So we'll be using those here and here, and we have our p bar and q bar, and after we plug all of that in, we will get a test statistic z of approximately 1.901. Of course, I've had to round at some place, and this is the test statistic, not to be confused with the critical z value. This is the test stat. What we can do with this, then, is find the p value. So the p-value is simply the area to the right of this z-value under the standard normal curve. And it's not, it's not a two-tailed, it's just a one-tailed because we're doing strictly greater than. If this were a not equal to, then we'd have both tails to worry about. But this is just a one-tail. So we're, we're saying, okay, we've got a z-score, a test stat of 1.901 here. What is this area to the right of that? And that's our p-value. So using a software program or a, or a table, you'll, you will get a p-value equal to approximately 0 0.029. Now, we have a significance level, a 1% significance level, alpha equals 0 0.01 over here. So this p-value is greater than our alpha of 0 0.01, so we have to fail to reject the null. Fail to reject the null, which is kind of good because then we get to go back to the golf course and practice and gather more data because we, <laughs> we have not gotten any conclusive evidence here. So we fail to reject the null. Now, what that says is we're not accepting the null. We are simply saying there's not enough evidence to say that the title, to title Town Club is more accurate. Note here that if our alpha were set at the 5% significance level, we would have been able to reject the null. But we set it low so that we could go back out and practice some more. That was an example about hypothesis testing about two proportions.